Emily is encouraging the president to stay in the 2024 race, defying calls for him to step aside following his alarming performance on Thursday's in Thursday's debate. The family is meeting at Camp David tonight. This is part of a planned gathering that was scheduled before the debate, we're, we're told. And the message out of that meeting, at least for now, appears to support to be support for the president to continue pursuing a second presidential term. CNN's Priscilla Alvarez joins us now in Washington. Priscilla, what's your latest reporting at this hour? Well, the president is huddling with his family following the immediate fallout of his debate performance on Thursday night. And Biden advisors are telling CNN that his family is encouraging him to stay in the race and supporting him and expressing that support, including Hunter Biden and the president's grandchildren. These advisors also saying that the conversations have been focused on how the family can help the president and not whether he should reconsider his candidacy. Of course, all of this, all of these conversations follow uh, what has transpired since Thursday night's debate, as there have been calls for the president to withdraw from the race, including in uh, editorial boards, as well as all corners of the Democratic Party. Now, the president himself has also been collecting data anecdotally and through public polling as he, too, tries to assess what uh, what folks are feeling across the party. And that has been a deep concern. Panic has certainly set in. Donors have been racked with anxiety over the president's poor performance on Thursday night. Now, the president, of course, did participate in a fundraising blitz over the weekend where he, too, conceded that Thursday night was not his best debate performance, but said that he would continue to fight and that he wanted to stay in the race. But the president and his campaign are certainly, Allison, under great scrutiny tonight. And what we know so far from the huddle that he had with his family at Camp David today is that he has the support of his family and their encouragement. Of course, that is no small thing. These are key players uh, in President Biden's orbit and have been crucial in a lot of his decision making when it comes to running for president. Priscilla, thank you very much for all of that reporting. We're joined now by CNN senior data reporter Harry Enten. He uh, was here to run the numbers. So, Harry, do we have new poll numbers for President Biden post-debate? We, we do. You know, CBS News, YouGov conducted some polling post-debate. We can compare it to the pre-debate numbers. And the bottom line, Alice, it's not any good. It's not any good. Look at this. Voters who say that Biden has the mental health to be president. It was just 35 percent pre-debate. Look where it's dropped to now post-debate. 27 percent. How about that he should be running for president? It was 37 percent pre-debate. It's now 28 percent. I have never seen numbers this bad for an incumbent president during my lifetime. I mean, that mental health to be president, just 27 percent. You might say, OK, you know, that's low. But a lot of people thought Biden was too old back in 2020. These numbers look nothing like this back in 2020. These numbers were bad already. And the truth is, Allison, they have gotten just considerably worse, even in just a few days after that first presidential hmm. debate. Harry, do we have polling yet that suggests that voters want a different candidate? Yeah, this is the whole question, right? If it's not President Biden, then who could it be on the Democratic side? And the truth is, there are no easy answers. You know, I went back and looked at the polling versus Donald Trump for a bunch of different Democrats have been suggested. Gretchen Whitberg, Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris. Look at this. They all trail Donald Trump. So the idea here that we're somehow going to get this magic bullet, that there's somehow going to be some Democrat who can beat Donald Trump easily. I just don't see it in the numbers. At this particular point, if Joe Biden takes on Donald Trump, he's trailing. If there's another Democrat who runs against Donald Trump, they too are trailing. Perhaps you want to make the argument you bring in another Democrat who isn't as well known as Joe Biden, who univer has universal name recognition, and maybe they could change the numbers. But the fact is, any Democrat who entered the race right now, at least among those that are being suggested by a bunch of folks, they would all enter the race at this particular point as an underdog to former President Donald Trump. But, Harry, are those numbers old numbers or are those since the debate? Average, right? Because the key is I don't just want to rely upon one polling number. But even the limited polling data that we have post-debate suggests that none of those candidates on your screen, Gretchen Whitmer, Gavin Newsom or Kamala Harris, any of those would be favored over Donald Trump. He leads against all of them, whether you look at the pre-debate numbers or the post-debate numbers. And of course, I like to look at an aggregate of numbers. So that's what I did. But the fact is, even if you just did post-debate, it really wouldn't look 
any different. Hmm. Do you have any precedent for how lopsided Thursday's debate was? Yeah. I mean, if you want to take one solace, if you are Joe Biden, the fact is first debate winner margins. Look, Donald Trump, more people by a 34 point, 34 point margin said that Donald Trump beat Joe Biden in the debate. That's not much different than what Joe Biden's margin over was over Donald Trump four years ago. It's actually larger than the Hillary Clinton margin that she had over Donald Trump. But you may remember that first debate back in 2012 where Barack Obama just did horribly. Mitt Romney won that debate in the voters' minds by 42 points. But of course, he didn't become president. Barack Obama was reelected. So I guess if you want to take a look on the one bright note is there is a history of someone losing the first debate as an incumbent and going on to win the presidency. And that was 12 years ago. OK, so you're saying that somebody I mean, you you have seen examples of somebody, um, you know, coming from behind, basically, in that way, after a, after a poor debate. Yeah, that, that, that is true. But here's the thing that I would note, which is that Joe Biden was trailing going into the first debate. OK, Barack Obama was leading. So I want to limit it down for you. Incumbents who were trailing going into the first debate and then lost that first debate. Well, how about Jimmy Carter lost that one debate he took on Ronald Reagan in 80. George H.W. Bush lost that first debate to both Ross Perot and Bill Clinton. And in 2020, Donald Trump lost that first debate to Joe Biden. Well, guess what, Allison? They all lost. They all lost. So the question is for Joe Biden. Can he defy history, create new history and be an incumbent who trail going into that first debate? And then one, well, he's going to have to do it if he wants to get reelected in November.